Hello everyone, welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Today we're going to do another fun block in Kimberbell's Quilting Through the Seasons Ladder Quilt Project. In today's video, we're going to be working on this vase block here. We won't be stitching the embellishments, but we're just going to be working on the base block. So if you're ready to go, let's go over to our onboarding machines and let's get started. Okay, we're at the machine. I've made sure that I have enough bobbin thread down below and I have my big hoop out for this project. This is my nine and a half by 14 inch hoop. It's a big one, huh? Yes, the design file that we're going to be stitching out first, the quilting, says it's eight and a half by 12 and a half, which is just a hair too big to fit in my eight by 12 hoop. So I had to get out the monster hoop on this one. So nine and a half by 14 hoop. And then I have a piece of poly no show mesh stabilizer in that hoop. Well, let's put it on the machine here. There we go. Whoops. There we go. We are in and ready to go. Go ahead and grab your plastic pouch system. That is labeled number 18 and or vase. Cause we're going to be using that for this block pulled out all my fabrics. I have this one, which is going to be the body of the vase. And I have this large one here, which is going to be the background fabric for this block and make sure that you fused the back side of that with a fusible. Okay. So I'm going to put that aside for right now and put this fabric aside for right now. And we're going to go to the screen cam and we're going to load the design. So I have a brother dream machine. If you have something similar, you can follow along with the steps. I'm going to click on embroidery. I'm going to go to my flash drive because I keep all my files on the flash drive. And I'm going to go to quilting through the seasons and I'm going to search for my quilting designs first. And the one I'm looking for for this block is the floral eight by 12. So I'm going to go to my floral. They're all KDQ 291 files and I'm going to look for my eight by 12. And here it is right here. It should come up eight and a half by 12 and a half. And it does. That's the one I want. Click set. Easy peasy. Now we're going to add the embroidered design on top. Now, if your machine can't add, don't worry. You're going to stitch out this quilting design right here. Clear your memory load the main quilting design of the vase and stitch that. But because I can add it, I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity and I'm going to add it. So I'm going to go back to quilting through the seasons. I'm going to go to the main quilt. And now I'm looking for the vase, which is right down here. Here we go. Vase. This design is going to be centered. So I don't need to do anything on it. Now, if you notice, there's this little stitch line right here that we don't stitch out at the very end. That helps this design come in centered. So since Kimberbell put that there, the computer can then calculate that, okay, this is where the block is on this side, and this is where it is on this side. So it automatically brings the design in centered just like that. Okay, so that's what that stitch line is for. But again, we don't stitch that out. It's usually the very last one. So it brings it in perfectly centered thanks to that line. Click embroidery. Dun, 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 dun. We are good. Okay, so now we're back at the hoop cam. I'm going to load a silver thread into my machine because the base fabric that we're using, let's pull it real quick, is kind of a silver color with white polka dots if you have the kit. And I kind of want to match that for the first several steps. So I'm going to load silver thread up on top. And for me, it's in back and up on top. I have my th large spools behind the machine on a thread stand. So it takes an extra little bit there to load it, but that's okay. Then we're going to stitch out the placement line for the batting. Okay. And that also means that we need to get our large piece of batting out. And that one, 
Let me pull it here. Is measured nine by thirteen. Nine by thirteen. Okay. So grab that piece of batting as well and put that next to you off to one side because we're going to need that in a second. Okay. So I've got my silver thread up on top. So now let's stitch out the placement line for the batting. You ready? Let's go. This hoop is so large, I had to move the camera and the table forward because it was about to hit the wall on the back side. So, yeah, I don't use this large hoop very often. Okay, and it's a monster. All right, so now I want to lay down my batting to make sure that it is covering that placement line on all sides. And we are good to go. So let's put our foot down and let's tack down the batting. Ready? Here we go. Okay, you know the routine now. We're going to take this over to the table and we're going to trim away the excess batting from the outside because we don't want that to come into our seam allowance. Okay, so I'll meet you right back here. Okay, now that the batting's trimmed, hoop is back on the machine and we're going to leave the silver thread up on top and I'm going to put the foot down and stitch out the placement line for the fabric. Here we go. <laughs> Let's lay down this fabric and I'm going to center it and I'm going to feel for the batting to get a good center. So you just feel for that batting. You can automatically, without even looking, you can feel it. You've got the fabric down very nicely centered. Okay, so I've still got the silver thread up on top. I'm going to put the foot down and let's tack down this fabric. Here we go. nicely done okay down to the fun part now we're going to do quilting and I think I'm going to continue to use the silver thread that I have up at the top of my machine I think I'd like it to kind of blend in with this fabric and then let the vase and its fabric and the leaves and eventually flowers and let those items be the focal point on this block so I'm going to stitch out the quilting using the silver thread up above. It's about a 10 minute stitch out in real life. So let's put the foot down, relax and enjoy and watch the quilting stitch out. Here we go. I just love watching that stitch out. Isn't that fun? Love the color, love the texture. So much fun. Okay, so now we're gonna work on a bunch of leaves. And I'm going to put in a kind of a darker green. This to me is almost like an emerald green. I like that. And then eventually I'm gonna be doing this lighter green 
for the lighter leaves. I think those two look good together. So pick two greens that you like, a darker and a lighter, and we're gonna put the darker one in the top of your machine first, okay? Then we're gonna stitch out these leaves. It's a, actually a long stitch out. It's about 24 minutes in real life. So we're gonna do these leaves, loading everything up here. All right, you ready to go? And a tiny loop, get that out. All right, sit back and relax, and let's stitch out the darker of the two leaves. Here we go. got the dark leaves done. Now we're going to switch out the thread and put the lighter of the two green threads up on the top of your machine. And now we're going to stitch out the next section of leaves. This is about a 12 minute in real life stitch out. So you ready to go? Let's sit back and relax and watch it stitch out the second set of leaves. Here we go. Okay, I just noticed it's not stitching anything out. And you know what that tells me? That tells me I ran out of bobbin thread. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the hoop off the machine. There we go. Yep, I'm out of bobbin thread. Yeah, my sensor doesn't work on my machine. So it definitely ran out. That's okay, because I'm gonna show you how to fix it, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is get another bobbin for the machine. Okay, I'm gonna reload that. And my machine, I form a pea just like that. And then it goes in, form it like a pea. All right. So we're going to put the hoop back on the machine and I'm going to pay attention to pretty much where it stopped. All right. Because I need to go back and restitch from that point. All right. So let's put the hoop back on the machine. Okay. So now let's go to the screen cam. So I'm going to hit the plus and minus button right here. And now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back in tens. Okay, I was missing that whole leaf there. And I was missing a leaf over on the one side. Alright, so let's see here. I actually missed three leaves. That's what I get for looking at my phone, right? So I usually sit here to see... But I wasn't watching it. Okay, there we go. We've done that leaf. Go forward in singles. Maybe a 10. Okay, it's going down. The other leaf that we did, it did that one. Okay, that's where I want to be. So just keep hitting plus or minus until you get back to where you need to restart. Okay. So now I'm back here, it's going to go down this stem and then it's going to branch over and start that leaf. All right, so now we're back in business. Put down and let's continue back on stitching up the leaves. Okay, so now we're going to put 
the dark green thread back on the top of the machine. And we're gonna finish out these leaves. This is a six minute and roll up stitch out. And then we're done with the embroidered leaf part. Okay, getting good. You got this? Let's throw that needle. And we're off and running. Here we go, six minutes in real life. Very nice. All right, now we're gonna move on to the vase. And I'm gonna put a cream thread in the top of my machine that kind of blends in and will match with the fabric from the kit that we're gonna be using in a few minutes for the vase. So put a cream colored thread or a matching thread to your fabric up at the top of your machine. And we're gonna stitch the placement line for the vase. We are getting there. There we go. Thread the needle and it's a one minute stitch out. Here we go. Okay, so put your fabric right side facing up and make sure you've got all the sides covered. We're good and top and the bottom. And I'll kind of make sure it's straightened out there a little bit too so the hatches are up and down. And we're gonna leave the cream thread up on the top of the machine. And now we're going to tack down this fabric. There we go. Okay, so you ready? Let's do it. So now we're going to take the hoop off the machine and we're going to go over to the table and I want you to trim away all of the excess fabric from around the outside of the vase. at the machine. I've got the hoop back on. Now we're going to stitch the outside of the vase. So I'm going to use Kimberbell's recommendation and I'm going to keep cream thread in the top of my machine that matches this thread and we're going to stitch it out. Okay, this is an eight minute in real life stitch out. Foot down and let's do it. Here we go.
the way a satin stitch just finishes off the edges like that. So pretty. All right, so now we're going to put taupe in the top of the machine because it's going to stitch out a decorative accent on the neck of the vase. So load taupe up above in your machine. And let's stitch this out. It's a two minute in real life stitch out. And get the loop out. All right, here we go. Nicely done. All right, so now we're going to stitch out some flowers. And Kimberbell is suggesting the cream for the flowers. And I think that would look nice, but I think I want my flowers to be white. So I'm going to put white thread in my machine. You pick what color you would like your flowers to be. Load the machine with that color thread. And we'll stitch this out. In real life, it's an eight minute stitch out. Okay, and we got a loop. Got to get the loop out. Okay, you ready? Let's sit back and relax. Eight minutes for the flowers. Here we go. nice I like the way the white flowers came out I really do okay so now we're going to stitch the center of the flowers and Kimberbell has a light green for the center of their cream flowers but I'm thinking like a light gold would be really realistic and would be pretty in the center of those and again would go for all seasons so I'm gonna put a light gold thread in my machine Hardest part now is you need to pick what color you would like the center of your flower to be. And put that color thread in the top of your machine. And let's stitch out the center of the flowers. center of the flower it looks really cool with the light gold so I'm happy with that so now it looks like we're going to be doing a placement line for the felt leaves so I'm gonna go ahead and put my darker green thread in the top of my machine and then we're gonna stitch out the placement line and now it's gonna get fun because we're gonna be doing some embellishment accents on these leaves Okay, so let's put the foot down. Dark green is up on top. Let's stitch out the placement line for the leaves. Okay, so if you notice where it did the placement line, it's stitching the center I call tack down line that it's going to do for these leaves. 
but also know that it's going to do a leaf shape around each side. So when you get over here, you need to make sure you have enough fabric for it to do the leaf over here and the leaf over here. All right. So if you remember correctly in my original videos, I did not trim out my embellishments. This is the large piece of the prickly pear embroidery felt that's in the embellishment kit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this so that I know it's going to cover the outer edge up here and allow enough over here and it's going to go all the way up covering this mark up here. So I'm literally positioning it and I'm going to go straight up and straight up and that's all I'm going to do. So I am literally going to let the leaves do it in this corner. Then I'm maximizing the amount that I can get out of this embroidery. So I've got the darker green thread up in the top of my machine. Just going to hold it with my stylus and we're going to tack down the leaves. Here we go. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to take the hoop off the machine, take this over to the table, and I'm going to show you how to trim up these leaves. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is trim up the top threads here, get those out of the way. All right, so now I'm going to trim around the outside of these leaves just to get the excess embroidery felt off this block. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to trim around as close as I can around the outside edge of each of the leaves. going to grab a seam ripper and what we're going to do we're going to very carefully remove the stitches along this outside edge not the middle only remove the outside edge stitches and what that is going to do is it's going to free up the leaves to be a three-dimensional leaf but do not take out the center leave the center only take out the outer edges okay here we go Now the next thing we need to do is we need to put a piece of wash away topping on top of these leaves in order to keep them down so that when we continue to stitch the block that the foot of the machine doesn't get caught in these three dimensional leaves. So I just happen to have a piece of wash away topper that I used for another Kimberbell project and so I'm just briefly going to cut it to size here so that it will cover these leaves just like that okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it down so that it doesn't get caught or doesn't move as we embroider 
And we may have to move this tape from time to time depending on where the machine is going to stitch, but that's okay. We're just going to tape it in place now and then when we see where the machine is going to go, we can lift up that tape. This is embroidery tape as well, so it easily tears away from any stitches if it does happen to get stitched on this tape will tear away as well all right so we are now ready to go back to the machine okay so we're back at the machine and we're going to do a placement line stitch then for the next felt so this tape will be in the way i'm just gonna peel that up and i'm going to reposition it a little bit further down here oops there we go, and that should be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and leave the darker green thread up on top, put the foot down, and let's stitch out the placement line for the next bunch of leaves. Here we go. Oh, right on the topping, that's okay. I'm gonna move the topping over a little bit. I'm gonna reposition my tape. Right. There. Okay, here we go. So let's trim up the excess tails of thread. We got everybody off. Okay, good. So now let's take that prickly pear embroidery felt. And now we want to line it up. But remember, you want to have enough on the outside to form a leaf shape all the way about. Okay, so I got that there. And I got that there. I think that's good. Okay, so if I come up here, position it, and I come all the way to there, that'll be good. Okay, give it a little more cushion. Clip down, and let's tack down this felt. Darker green thread is still up on top. going to do the same thing we did with this bunch of leaves. We're going to take the hoop off the machine. We're going to go over to the table and we're going to trim around the outside of these leaves, around the outside, getting the excess felt away. Then we're going to take our seam ripper and we're going to gently get rid of the outside of the leaves, not the inner spine, so to speak. The outside only is what you want to take away so that it will let the leaves flip up like a three-dimensional. Then we'll put another piece of the water-soluble topping on top and tape it down. All right, let's go over to the table and let's get that done.
Okay, we've got that down. And we've got everything taped. Some of the tape may pop up. Embroidery tape is not known for having great stick them, but I'm just gonna watch it as well. And I'm gonna keep my stylus handy. And if we're stitching too close to something where it's gonna have an edge, like here with this, I have some excess topping, I'll just make sure that it clears that before I stitch that section. So we're going to put white thread in the top of our machine. And this is going to allow us to stitch the placement line for the Velcro. This, let's put white thread up on top. Okay, we got a loop. Now I'm just going to watch it, and if it gets tends to get stuck on something, then I'm going to stop the machine. All right, let's go ahead and put the foot down, and let's stitch out these three little circles. Here we go. Okay, and you can see that last placement line went over part of the leaf and everything was down because of the topping, so we are good. So let's take the hoop off the machine and head over to the table, and I want to show you how to cut your Velcro and how to attach them to the areas where the placement lines have been stitched. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to take the Velcro part out of the embellishment kit that has the loops on it. One side is loopy, the other side is kind of more fuzzy, and this side we want to do with the loops. Okay, and the first thing I want to do, take that end off, is I want to cut these into half inch by half inch pieces. Okay, so that's all the pieces we need. We need three of them. So this measures an inch by an inch at this point. So if I were to cut this in half, that would give me a half inch. And then a half again would actually give me four pieces. I only need three, but it's easiest to cut it that way. So the first thing I'm gonna do, get my fingers out of the way, is I'm gonna cut it one inch. Okay, there's a little Adapter hangs on. Let's not lose that. Put that out of the way. Okay, so this is an inch by an inch. Now we need a half inch by half inch. So I'm going to kind of come in here, use my ruler, cut this into half inch. Oops. And then I can cut both of these at the same time into half inch pieces. There we go. So that's funny because I had four. Ah, oh, there it go. No, I had four. I need three, and one fell away. So I have three. Woohoo! The other one will show up. Oh, there it is. Found it. <laughs> this little thing, slippery things, just slipped right away. All right, let's put this someplace safe in my little storage over there for future projects. Okay, so now we're going to place these loop side up, loop side up. So that way the fuzzy part of the Velcro can attach to it. And we're going to literally glue it onto that placement line. And when I mean glue, I need a fabric glue to just lightly glue these to the fabric. And I'm using Aileen's Julet, and Julet is a embellishing glue. So it takes anything you want, like metals or crystals or Velcro, and can attach it to fabric on one side. So I use this as my embellishing glue. So let's go ahead. And I'm going to just very lightly put a dot in the middle, very lightly. Whoop. 
not as light as that. Loop side up. And I'm just going to position it. So I got a little bit of excess there, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because it's on the wash away st stabilizer. But I am going to take a little bit of my tape here and just scoop that up so it's off of there. All right. And then let that dry. This glue says let dry 24 hours before you wear it. But I'm pretty sure if I leave it dry overnight and by tomorrow morning, it will be good to go. So I want to put a dot, but not as big of a dot in the center. And then loop side up, glue it right there. And then loop side up. The glue is like an extra protection. You're going to sew this down after the glue dries, but you want a little bit extra security help holding that Velcro on in addition to the stitches. Okay. Make sure you put your lid back on your glue. All right. So now I'm going to let this dry. I will probably let it dry overnight and then I will come back with imaginative TV. We'll stitch out the tack down for this Velcro and then this block will be done and we can trim it all up and make it pretty. All right. So I'll meet you right back here after this glue dries. Okay, that has dried overnight, and now we have one step left to do. And I'm gonna leave white thread up on the top of the machine, and we're gonna just tack down, a little bit of tack down stitches on each of those three Velcro strips. And I wanna keep my stylus handy, just in case I need to move something out of the way. So let's put the foot down, and let's tack down those Velcro strips. Here we go. Okay, perfect now we are done there's one stitch left on the machine that is just a placement line we do not want to stitch that because that would stitch a line over here and a line over there Kimberbell uses those alignment lines in order to be able to make sure that the system knows where the design would be centered so we don't want to stitch that out okay so we are done so let's take this hoop off the machine. Let's take it over to the table and let's finish this block up. Okay, now let's get this block finished up. So it'll look all pretty. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take it out of the hoop. This monster hoop. All right, I'm gonna set that aside for a few minutes. So now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take all this tape off. Yeah, get that removed. Okay, some of it's a little sticky. It actually sticks better to the water soluble topping than what it does to the fabric. Every embroidery tape is a little bit different. get that off and let's get that off okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the water soluble from around the velcro you can tear it too but I'm gonna cut it because what I can probably do in the future for other parts of this block depending on how the leaves are I can still use that piece, perhaps to cover leaves on another block, so it's not to waste, because it's a fairly big piece. This one, the same thing, I'm just going to cut around it here. On each side. And here, okay, and then one more. Let's come this way. Because these Velcro P 
pieces are really small, just make sure you don't cut the leaf underneath. You want to just cut around the Velcro, not the leaf. Okay, because that's a pretty big piece that, again, maybe I can use for something. So we'll put that back in the water-soluble bag. Those look good. Now there's a little bit of water-soluble stabilizer still around the Velcro here. So I'm going to take a Q-tip and just dunk it in a little bit of water. And I'm going to let it go right on that water-soluble stabilizer to get the rest of that up. A little bit more water. It usually dissolves, I believe, in like 20 seconds. Is there any more? There's a little bit of, around here too. So I'll do that. It's gonna get caught on the Velcro loops. So just try to go along the edges. There we go. And this one, yeah, there's a little bit over here too. And if it gets hot, then use the other side. There we go. And a little bit over here. That looks good. Then I can come back here and gather the rest of that water soluble that is off of that. Okay, so then we're just gonna let that dry. It's not a big wet area, so it's not that big of a deal. So now we can square up this block. Okay, this block is going to measure eight and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. And if you look at this outer stitch line, the one that we use to tack down the fabric, and you can actually measure it from this one to this one is eight and a half. And from this top one, down to here is 12 and a half. So it's perfect. Now in the Kimberly Ball instructions, it talks about using an orange pop ruler, which you can also use, and allowing three inches on the left side of the base, and coincidentally from the stitch line to the edge of the base over here is three inches. And it says allow three eighths of an inch down here and one, two, three, that is three eighths of an inch. So because we did the background quilting, our squaring up is gonna be really easy. We don't have to worry about positioning a ruler anywhere. We're just gonna literally trim to eight and a half by 12 and a half using this outer stitch line because it gives us the exact dimensions that Kimberbell is asking for using the orange pop ruler. So the first thing I wanna do is just come over here and I'm going to look to line up my ruler on that stitch line. So I come right over here, everybody's lined up, get my rotary cutter out and I'm going to trim that block. There we go, put that aside, okay. So now I'm going to flip this over and use my mat and I want to make sure that this is 12 and a half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. And if I look, make sure I'm lined up. If I look on that stitch line, I am right on it. So it's perfect. So I can go ahead. Cut that edge off, there we go. Okay, so we got the top and the bottom done. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the sides. Okay, this is going to be eight and a half inches. So again, double check, everything's good. So I'm gonna go right to that stitch line that lands up on eight and a half and trim it up. And mind you, if you're a hair off the stitch line one end or another like I was there it's not a big deal I'm gonna come right over here line that up because sometimes the stitch lines don't stitch a hundred percent straight okay so you can be off a little bit as long as your block measures 
eight and a half by 12 and a half, you're good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. I'm lined up. The stitch line is actually just under the ruler's edge, which is fine. And trim that off. Get that to one side. Perfect. Because like I said, any differences in the stitch line is going to be in your seam allowance. So as long as your block is squared and straight, that's all that matters. How about that? I just love how amazing this block is with the three dimensional leaves. That's so cool. So you did it. You finished the vase block. So I hope you had as much fun making this block as I did. And I hope you stay tuned here on Jolly Molly TV for more fun and more blocks in Kimberbell's amazing quilting through the seasons project. So until I see you next time, take care. Happy stitching. Bye-bye.